All right, you're still on the morning rush on the B ninety nine point nine. Ooh, you didn't know, and I promised you guys I had guests today, and they they are special. You see these guys, distinguished gentlemen. One of them even has a tie on. You know, it's serious when somebody puts on a tie. <laughs> that's where it, that's where things get real. All right, so please welcome Doctor Inonitie. Aha, I got it right. Christopher, he's a senior registrar, Department of Family and Travel Medicine in the University of Potako Teaching Hospital. He has promised that he's going to come back and explain that part a little bit more to us. Uh, we, you should, definitely. We also have Mr. Uduma Kalu. Uh, he's a regional manager, Mega Life Sciences Pharmaceuticals. Distinguished gentlemen, you guys are welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so what glad tidings do you bring our way? It's mm. <laughs> close to Christmas morning. <laughs> okay. Um, today is actually World Awareness Day for Stress. Oh. November 2nd. The number one silent killer. Exactly. Mm. And stress is something that most people, everybody goes about saying, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. But stress in itself has three levels. But I will first talk about what stress is. Stress is that reaction or the response that you have to changing tides and, um, and and conditions. For example, emotional situations, um, physical situations, and all that. And the problem, is, the thing is that most people are under pressure, but they are not under stress. Hmm. Stress, can you, can you break that exactly. Out? Stress and pressure, they are intertwined, but they are kind of like different. Pressure is that sustained um, sustained feeling you get to deliver on a certain goal. But the thing is that it's different between pressure and stress is that in pressure, you have the resources to deliver on this goal. But in stress, you don't have those resources to deliver on the goal. That's why the mathematical definition of stress is S is equals to P, which is pressure, greater than R, which is resources. Stress is equals to more pressure than... <laughs> exactly. So when pressure is greater than resources, that is where stress comes in. Okay. So, if we continue with that, we can now talk about what are these stressors that leads to the stress. Because we can all say we are stressed, we are stressed, but the primary goal in stress management is to identify the stressors that the individual is going through that is responsible for the stress. The average Nigerian will tell you just waking up is stressful. Exactly. There's this technology that goes around these days I'm going through a lot. (laughs) You get. So, that is it. So, there are many stressors that are responsible for the stress that the individual goes through. And I can classify them into physical stressors, emotional stressors, uh, psychological stressors, and all that. But if I'm going to break it down, under physical stressors, for example, you bought a house, and there's a free land just adjacent to your house. And then suddenly, someone is building in the land. And then, you notice that after a while, it's a church that is moving close to your house. You know what that means? That church is going to be playing music. They yeah. are going to be praying. They are going to have night VG. And before you know, out. they are going to have noise. Mm-hmm. And in the end, that is a form of stress to you normally. Because you cannot probably not sleep well. You'll be having insomnia. You'll be irritable. You'll be angry. You'll be tensed. That is another a source of stress to you. Another source of stress is what we call lifestyle. Like your day-to-day activities. For example... It, you lo- you lost a loved one, or you are bereaved, or your marriage is breaking down, or you are having stress at your place of work, which is organizational stress on its own. These are all the different stressors that we go through that can actually bring us down to with the signs and symptoms of stress that we are going to talk about. Okay. Then the different types of stress. Stress can be divided into two groups. You have the positive and the negative stress. I will explain them, and then the acute, episodic, and chronic stress. I will just try and be break it down into... You need to. (laughs) Okay, the positive stress are the good stress. I can't imagine any good stress. There are good stress, actually. For example, you just got a job. You are motivated, you remember? When you got the job, you are motivated. You want to prove to your employees that you can actually do the job. That is a positive stress. But negative stress is that you have gotten a job, and by the time you got there, your job descriptions has increased by 20% or has increased by 100%. Instead of you to sit down here and do this, you're telling probably you do other things, you do other... You cannot really merge these things together. That is where the negative stress comes in. And where we come down with stress itself is when negative stressors 
are bigger than positive stressors. Then the tendency for us to come down with the signs and symptoms of stress are there. Okay. Then the other one I tried to explain, I talked about another type of stress is the acute, episodic, and the chronic stress. Acute means sudden. In, in, in acute is a medical term, but it means sudden. Acute stress are those stress that will last from minutes to a few hours. For example, as I'm driving here now, for example, maybe my tire busted. Yeah. That's acute stress. Acute stress is not supposed to lead to a problem. It's not supposed to lead to a, a medical problem for me. All I just need to do is, okay, get a, a vocalizer to get my tire fixed and I move. You understand? That is acute stress. It's just for a transient period of time, I solve the problem and I'm gone. But episodic stress are those stresses that it happens today, probably after three days, it happens again. And after a week, it happens again. One particular issue, that is episodic, episodic stress. It's not continuous you get. So that's alone. Episodic stress is kind of like mild. It's not a big problem, but it can actually lead to what we call chronic stress that could now result in the problems and the medical issues we are talking about with stress. Chronic stress are those stresses that are constantly there. For example, you're, in a, you're married. You're having, exactly, you're having constant, you're having constant banter in your house. Two, four, seven days probably. That is the chronic stress. And you have to be with this person. You have to come back to the house with this person. You know, this is a major problem for you. And that is the type of stress that leads to the medical issues we are going to talk about on that stress. Okay. Now, if you have, now the signs and symptoms of stress. Signs, as it does, you can divide them into physical signs, mental signs, behavioral signs. And the emotional signs. Under the physical signs are the ones the patient complain about. I'm having headaches. My muscles are tense. I'm irritable. Fatigue. Dizziness. It can even cause gastrointestinal disturbances like diarrhea, um, constipation. Patient can actually not sleep well sometimes when they have um, stress, uh, part of the symptoms of stress. These patients too can also come and tell you, ah, doctor, I have, my heart is beating too fast. This is what we call palpitation in medicine. That is a sign of stress. So these are the physical signs that you can actually see in this patient. Under the mental signs, because of prolonged stress, what we call the coding stress, this patient can actually have the disorientation. They can forget things. They can have memory lapses under the, the mental aspect of it. Under the behavioral aspect of it, in the process of trying to cope, provide coping mechanism to the stressors or the stressful situations that they are under. They tend to engage in various vices. They might either start binge drinking or smoking or using hard drugs and all that. So that's the behavioral aspect of the stress that you're talking about. Then under emotional stress, this is where the problem really is. This is where the stress has really been there for a long time and these patients are coming down with either anxiety disorders, they are coming down with depression. From depression, they might can start having signs of suicidal ideas or even suicidal attempts and even suicide itself. Exactly. So that is where it's ended with regards to the signs and symptoms of stress. Now, you cannot talk about stress without talking about how it should be managed. Oh, definitely. <laughs> how we should, what we should do regarding stress. Stress, the main thing in stress, like I said at the beginning of this program, is we must identify the stressors. If you don't know what you're fighting, you're not going to deal with it. You must identify what is responsible for your stress. And when you now finally identify it, you should know that stress is never going to go away. Hmm. We cannot decide when we are going to be stressed. All we just need to do is develop coping mechanisms for us to cope with this particular stress that we are dealing with if we can't leave the stress. Now, that's where you now come to the A, B, C, D of stress management. The A is for awareness, which is what we are doing today. Today is Stress Awareness Day, 2nd November 2022. You should be aware. Everybody should make everybody aware. You as an individual that is stressed should be aware that, okay, there is a problem. You get, I'm being stressed. I'm feeling in type of way and I have to do something about it. Getting that awareness alone is key. Because sometimes you see this patient, they will come to the clinic, they are complaining of headache, they are complaining of this, they are complaining of that. They've taken malaria drugs over and over again. They've gone to patent stores, got medications for typhoid over and over again, but the symptoms are still there. But when they, when they have this awareness and they come to us and we're able to take a good history and identify what the problem is, they don't need to go about spending unnecessary money on drugs that they actually don't need. That is the awareness. The B is the balance. Remember during the program I told you about positive and neg- negative. I told stress. you about positive and negative stress. You must balance them. You must try your best within your limits to balance them. Have a good time for yourself. Try and relax. Try and go on the tr- on trips 
and all that. We know that the country is difficult, but it is very, very important that we try to balance the stress for our mental health. Then the C is control. Now there is stress already. You have to control what you're doing. That is where the CBT comes in. What we call cognitive and behavioral therapy is a form of psychotherapy for patients with chronic stress that comes to us. What we do is that we take a history from them. We ask them questions. We try to identify their stressors. After identifying their stressors, we try to talk them out of it. There are some patients that they are pessimistic. Some people have mind trap. Mind trap is those persons that they, are, they have unrealistic thinking. <laughs> for example, for example, you're coming and you greeted your boss and your boss probably didn't answer it. You're you coming. start thinking about why. Oh, this guy happened. hates me. He does this. He does that. Or you get back from work and you're having headaches. You say, ah, I'm having headaches. Check, I have brain tumor. Those are people. <laughs> those are people that have unrealistic thinking. And people like that have high tendencies of being stressed and then okay. having medical and uh, mental issues from stress. Also, pessimists. People that are very pessimistic, they don't feel like anything that they do can ever come out good. Just as you're anchoring this program, you're already thinking, ah, man, I'm going to mess this program up. Those are pessimists. People like that have to, they have a way, a strong history of having stress and stress-related issues in long term. Also, perfectionists as well. People that has to, they feel like they can deliver 100% in everything, which is, we both know that it's not going to be possible. No. People like that have said, so what we do in cognitive and behavioral therapy is that we try to change, we try to reframe, we call it reframing. We try to reframe their mind and their thinking. Those with pessimistic thoughts, you try to make them think in a positive light about themselves. They should look at things in the positive angle. You see your boss, you greeted, he didn't answer. You think, ah, probably he didn't hear oh. So I shouldn't be bothering myself about it. If I greet him tomorrow, he answers me fine. You understand? So you try to reframe those bad habits, all those bad thinking, those pessimistic thinking, those mind traps that you have for yourself and rebrand yourself into something good. Talk positive about yourself. See positive things to yourself. See stressors as a way of life. It's something you should deal with. It's something you can live with. something you can manage. Then in the behavioral aspect of it is when we now talk about Stopping a uh, cigarette cessation. If you're taking cigarette, you stop. If you're, sm- if you're taking alcohol, we don't say stop alcohol. We say moderate. Moderation, yeah. yeah, you say you moderate alcohol. We both know that as men, we are liable to two bottles of beer every day. And then the <laughs> ladies, yes. And then the ladies are one Amen. a day. Uh-huh. So you try to moderate those things. Then you, mo- another thing is sleep. You have to, people have a, as in a lot of people have, and they have, their sleeping hygiene is rubbish. <laughs> that was harsh. <laughs> yes, that's just the truth. I'm, I might just be part of them. <laughs> you read late into the night, you're reading in your bedroom, you're watching TV in your bedroom. Ideally, that in sleep management, that is out of it. Your bedroom should be cool, should be cold, the light should not be bright. It's somewhere you should go to strictly for sleep and pleasure. Not where you go to, yes. Not where you go to and uh, read your books or watch movies. Watch movies in the living room. You get then diets. Eat good diets. Take a lot of fruits and vegetables. Then exercises. You are entitled. You should do exercise at least thirty minutes every day. Thirty minutes every day, five times a week, three to five times a week. And these exercises should be aerobic exercise, brisk walking, jogging, and all that. Then, if you are feeling stressed, there are some relaxation techniques that you can do. You can sit down, close your eyes, close your legs, put your hands on your laps, and then take in deep breaths for like 10 minutes, slowly, deep in and out, in and out, in and out. And then that is it. That is it for the C aspects of management. Then the D is for drugs. There are medications that can, when you finally come down with chronic stroke, um, stress, stress, sorry, not stroke, when you come down with chronic stress and feel like, okay, we know your problem, but right now you're either having anxiety or you're having depression and we need to look into. We might have to now give you some medications. Sometimes we give benzodiazepines, anxiolytics to calm your nerves down so you can sleep, so you can relax and all that. When you're having depression, we give antidepressants, maybe it's SSRIs or other group of antidepressants that we can give. And then, because stress causes release of free radicals, these free radicals are actually detrimental to our cells in the body. There are some products that we can give to help eradicate these free radicals. And these products are the ginseng products. They are Korean um, herbal products. They have been proven to be good, to be nice and to be very durable. These products can be taken as well on a daily basis by the patients. 
and in the long run you should know that which my pharmacist colleague is going to throw more light on okay. those products and in the long run you should know that stress is something we have to deal with it's something we might have to live with but it's important that we know that if we can't change it don't break your head about it try and control it okay so Thank there's you. a question here yeah uh, someone is asking is there any particular I think I say age. Okay, any particular age bracket? No, that is prone to. There is no stress. age bracket. I even forgot to mention in during my when I was talking about the courses, even back of the organizational stressors, school, bullying. People so have been even bullied. As young as second. Yes, people have school. been bullied in several places around exactly. the world that have committed suicide because of stress. So there is no age limit to stress. Everybody can go on that stress. All you just need to do is identify what the problem is. And they seek for help. Okay, so now this question is from me. Now, based on your experience, Go. yeah, what would you say is the most common stressor that you come across? Is monetary stress. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I swear to God. Then I forgot to mention for men, there's loss of libido. Oh wow. Yes, when they are going through stress, the libido. Oh, man likes to hear that part. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. the cause, the major primary cause here is actually monetary. Okay. Aspect. Yeah. All right. So we've heard from the doctor. Let's hear from the pharmacist now. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Actually, uh, the doctor has already taken a lot of the explanation about stress. So I'm going to talk about the, uh, uh, the, the stress part. week, yeah. the B part of it. Okay. So uh, actually, um, uh, today is World uh, International Stress Awareness Day. And we are taking the whole week. So from the table of Mega Life Sciences Nigeria Limited, we are a foremost pharmaceutical company. Uh, we're actually concerned about human wellness. So that's why we are so much interested about uh, assisting the populace to uh, fight stress. Okay. And you know, the, the, the team for this uh, World International Stress Awareness Day uh, is together to build uh, resilience and reduce stress. So we join hands together, we build residence, uh, resilience, and we reduce stress. So for Mega Life Sciences, like he said, we actually, uh, uh, we, we are foremost from a single company and we are concerned strictly about human wellness. Uh, 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 in addition to that, we go as far as helping people to cope with stress. Uh, we have a program we call Good Help By Yourself. Actually, we use that program to teach people what the doctor was talking about, how you can do exercise on your own, how you can concentrate on your own, how you can balance your life. So, uh, in as much as we are manufacturing and distributing drugs, we also assist humanity on how to cope with stress. So, actually, we are taking a whole week. Uh, International World Stress Awareness Day comes the first Wednesday of every November. Okay. In a year, first Wednesday. So, it falls in today. So, we are taking in uh, the whole week. So, we have... Um, uh, we have instructed everyone in our establishment to begin to work to, to disseminate information about stress, like we are doing uh, in the radio today. Uh, most of our staff, all of everybody is on the field trying to talk to people. We are organizing awareness campaigns in the hospital. We are having health work in some teaching hospitals. We will do in UPTH here in Port okay. We are also doing in a military hospital as well as the stress work, as we are doing the stress work with the doctors, with the health, healthcare workers around there, people around will be hearing the jingles about stress. They begin to ask you, what is this stress? And actually, we distribute some flyers, you know, that will bring, bring out all the information the doctors actually talked about okay. so that people can read and understand also what is actually, uh, yes, what is actually happening, what actually uh, is causing their problems. So that's what we are doing the whole of this week. So this is World Stress Awareness Campaign Week. So that's actually what we are doing. So um, when he was talking about uh, a chronic stress, uh, how to cope, he mentioned some uh, drugs that can be used. Yeah. Actually, we are also uh, uh, trying to tell people about that too. Okay. The drug can, can actually help you take care of or cope with stress. We have a drug we call Ginsomine. Okay. Ginsum is a ginseng multivitamin, like he mentioned. Uh, it has some good ingredients that can help you fight stress. That can help, it help you cope with stress so that you don't come down with it. You take it one capsule daily, most preferably uh, at breakfast. And you take it, you can take like two months, 
and then you begin to feel very okay about your, your body system. Your system will begin to function well. We have Jane Somin Eve for the ladies. You know, the ladies, they go through a lot. After working with us, they can still go back home and still take care of the family, yeah. even when the men are sleeping. They are still awake to take care of the children. So we have extra ingredients added to Jane Somin Eve to also help them to cope with the effect of stress. That one will go extra mile to make them look younger, more beautiful, good skin, good hair, a lot of things good about them. You know they like beautiful things. <laughs> of course. Yes. <laughs> so these are the two products we have, Ginsomin and Ginsomin. If Ginsomin can be taken by everybody. Okay, I was about to ask if that if women take would they start getting deep voices? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Ginsomin, Ginsomin can be taken by everybody, both male and female. But Ginsomin Eve strictly for the ladies. Okay. There are other things that we added in this. So it's very good for them. Oh, you, you mentioned one a day. What happens if you take more than one a day? Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we multiply that means most essentially the, 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 in, the, the, the molecules should be all the molecules added they are meant for you taking it once every day. You are not going to exceed it. Well, there's what we call hypervitaminosis. You don't take something that is loaded like that one, uh, more than once. Okay. You take once a day as prescribed by the doctor. The doctor will always tell you, take this one once a day because he knows why he's telling you to take it once a day. So you abide by the prescription. A lot of people think that they know a little bit. <laughs> when they take it more, it will yeah. give them the yeah, more exactly. boost. You know, like, no. uh, if no, I take please, one, I'll feel the, your, 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 your I system, take Yeah, your system is actually designed to take in some of these you know, as stipulated uh, amounts. Okay. So you go with it once a day. You can take up to a month too. You start. You begin to feel the effect. Then you wait. You give a you give a break for like two weeks to have a washout period, so that most of those vitamins can get washed off out of the system and you begin again. So it's a daily. Oh, why do you need them to go out of your system? No, no, no. no. Like, you you know, some of the, the uh, some of the uh, fat soluble vitamins, they, when they get stuck, they begin to result all these things in your system. So when you leave out some period of, we call it washout period in pharmacy, so that this, you begin to take more. So when they get washed off, when they have finished doing their work, so some of the uh, uh, the things that are not needed in the system get washed off after the bed. Water soluble vitamins can continue to go, but fast soluble vitamins you need, need a washout period. Okay. So that's why you need a break of two weeks to continue to take one of these products. Okay. And it will help you boost your your immunity. To help boost your immunity, so it will help you fight stress. Well, see, that's to a, help also, well, aside from stress, there's other yes, it will help viruses, you. Uh, 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 it will boost your immunity so that you can cope with all those things you're mentioning now. Now, in addition to that, it will help in performance in males. <laughs> yes, very important because when you're stressed, you will hardly do do something good, you know, as as a man. So the ginsomin will help you boost your performance and okay, uh, 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 all your activities. By the day to carry and for those of you listening, you they're not saying that specifically what it does. No, 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 yes. no. <laughs> <laughs> it will raise your libido and then help you cope with stress. When you're stressed, you can hardly do something, but yeah. when, when the cortisol level is reduced, then yeah. the performance it, it will improve. Okay. So that's actually how it works. So you need to reduce your stress to help you reduce stress at the same time, help in performance and vitality you know, in, in your life. So it's very good. Okay, so how can people reach you in case they want to get in touch with you to mm. uh, get our products, this product? Yes, our products are available in all pharmacies across the country. Okay. So even in Port Harcourt here, all the pharmacies, they have Ginsomin and Ginsomin Eve. Could you, do you mind spelling it? Just? Ginsomin is spelled G-I-N-S-O-M-I-N. Ginsomin. The other one, you just have add Eve. The opposite of Adam. <laughs> so there are two products I'm presenting here. Okay. So that's it. Uh, you guys have been listening to Dr. Immunitier. Ah, Christopher. Uh, he's a senior registrar, Department of Family and Travel Medicine, UPTH. And Mr. Uduma Kalu. He's a regional, regional manager, Mega Life Sciences Pharmaceuticals. And it's all about stress. They've told you what stress is some things you need to avoid, and some things that you could do to actually make yourself you know, less prone to stress. Well, I don't think you said you can't escape it completely. Can't escape. You can just reduce the effects that Copy it has mechanisms. on you. Coping mechanisms. Okay. All right. Okay, go ahead. Please. Hey, uh, I just forgot to add something else. Um, we are actually disseminating this information across the social media as well. Okay. So this is where people can just access our jeans in Nigeria in Facebook and Instagram. They can also get across to that and then see more information about 
stress and ginseng. So people can assess it on their own. That's how the information gets. You can put it to another person. You can keep exchanging. Let people hear the jingle about stress. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys also respond to questions? On yes, on online, media? online on social media, we respond to questions so they can they can contact us, share, and then respond. All right. Ask whatever you. question you have to ask online, then you can go ahead and respond. Okay. To you. All right. Thank you very much for taking this time. It's an important service. Mm-hmm. Stress is something is like I said, the number one killer. Silent killer for a lot of people, especially men. Let's mm. not even play about that part. Very, very so very taking well. time out the whole week to highlight this and to work on it is very admirable. We thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. And also to the unnamed guest in the studio as well. He didn't want to say anything, but we respect <laughs> you, man. We see you too. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. All right, we roll on. Ajibota 22, Borge and Files. Too many women. <laughs>